like Epic versus Nick Rack is underway. Epic up one to zero. I believe that has been casted by Little Mac. But we have our own series. Oh my god. Just jumping right on in. And spawning in the bottom left hand corner of Crimson Quartz, we have the South Korean Terran player, the Blue Terran representing Shopify Rebellion. It is Byun. And spawning in the top right hand corner, we have as well we have the Costa Rican Zerg player, the Red Zerg representing Team License to Kill, LTK. It is Eon. And if you're in the chats, ah, it's time to get your gamba going. Best of luck. Predictions are open, and you can place your bets on who you think will take the series. Eon going pool first. Now, again, Eon is hyper aggressive. Uh, we expect all ins in almost every single game. But what kind of all in is the question? Right, there are Bane Busts, there are Roach Rushes, there's Link Queen Nidus all ins. There's potential here initially. Fast spawning pool. This can lead into an earlier. I was gonna say into an earlier Roach Warren, but it looks like Eon is opening up Gasless. Pool into hatchery. Interesting. Um, this will be a safer opener for Eon, is what I will say. This will be a safer opener. This is more ideal for something like Two Racks Reaper. Uh, which Bion is known for. Uh, so, again, it, it does make sense here for Eon. Unfortunately, as we can see, it is going to be a more standard opener instead. Uh, we'll see if Eon can bypass the Reaper. It can be a little bit more difficult on this map. We're loading into Ghost... Uh, sorry, okay, sure. uh, Crimson Court. And on this map, uh, there's not that many kind of attack paths. There's not many avenues of attack, especially early on when the rocks have not been knocked down. So we'll see if Eon can sneak past the Reapers. As the initial wave of lings are moving out, it's going to be six lings for Eon. And again, ideally, Eon wants to avoid this Reaper. Oh. Uh, wants to avoid it, but Bian is going right through the center. Oh, we do see Eon hugs the edge of the wall. Let's go. Very well practiced. Eon does avoid the Reaper, just barely. And now he can slip in and go for the CC. And the goal here is to delay, maybe even deny the expansion. CV is going to be a focus down. There is the single Marine here to defend. Boys are being pulled. Bjorn, he doesn't want to force a cancel on that expansion. We'll pull the boys. We'll shut down the links. We'll get one SCV, but just the one. Very nice cleanup here by Bjorn. Alas, Bjorn, he only lost one worker, killed six links, was forced to pull the boys, but did save his expansion. So very nice response here by Bjorn. Did also force him to run back home with the Reaper, but now he can move out across the map. And now it's going to be on Eon to defend. Ooh, meanwhile, Bion responding, of course, with a third TC. Third TC before Starport. Very economic build here by Bion. And sure, even though he was forced to pull some boys, I, I would still favor Bion's position here. Eon was hoping for more damage. He's hoping for a little bit more. Third base being thrown down. Eon is still mining gas. So this is going to be a big tell for Eon. As the Reaper gets in. I not like this. Reaper does barely get past the Queens. I say that is shut down. Nice intercept by Eon. But again, this fast gas income tells us, okay, is it going to be a Lair, a Roach Warren, or a Bailey Ness? It's going to be something. Uh, more gases are being taken. This leans more towards something more gas intensive. And there it is. It's going to be the Roach Warren. So Eon is rushing into Roaches. No lair yet. Behind this, beyond 3C into Banshee. 3C Banshee here from the Terran. Economic, very standard, very safe as well. I mean, Banshees are ideal against Roach Ravager. We'll see what Eon can get done. Uh, Eon, he's cutting workers at 38, so he's got 38 workers, uh, just under 2 base saturation, and now he's flooding roaches and links. There's no lair, there's no longevity in this kind of setup here for Eon. It's very committed, very all in. Just massing link roach. Oh! Into Ravager, I imagine. And if this wasn't a Banshee opener, then this, I mean, there's, there's still a lot of potential here for Eon, definitely. Banshees are amassing. First Banshee's already out. 
going for harass. Uh, cloak is almost done, and there's no oh, there's no spore. There's no spore. Things are spotted. Roach is revealed. Yeah, and the banshee does respond. Uh, go still committed to the mineral line. Ravagers have morphed in, and it's purely Ling Ravager. Uh, does catch one Hellion. Ah, uh, but the drones, they're going down. They're being shut down by the Banshee. It's all or nothing for Eon. And the second Banshee has arrived and can target down the Ravagers. Despite that, the wall is open. The wall is wide open. Boys being pulled away. The Wilds! Do we have any? Wild, they will zone back the army, connecting with one of the Hellions. So far, so good. We have two more Hellions behind this. Wilds, they oh, don't quite connect. A lot of SCVs are going down. And the Ravagers are being targeted as well. Down to three Ravagers, but Lings, can they barely break through? Ravagers body blocking the Lings for a moment there. Files oh, causing a bit of friendly fire. The Ravagers have been cleaned up. And it looks like the Banshees will clean everything else. Yeah, Lings are flooding in, but now there are Banshees. Now there are Cyclones. Good position here for Bjorn. Bjorn still with a higher economy, with more SCVs. He mules. And this is why, I mean, going 3CC Banshee can be so safe. Like Banshees, there's nothing to really deal with them. They shut down the Ravagers, they shut down the Lings. And Eon is still all in. Uh, Eon, he has spotted the third base. Still just ignoring it, going straight for the main. Ah, Stim is done. Nice start of stepping here out of Eon. Trading well against the Lings. But Eon, he slips into the mineral line. SCVs are going down. Eon down to 33. He's lost how many? 29 SCV kills. But there are mules. Ah, like the worker kills is nice, but the reality is triple mule production. Like the mules are insane here for Bjorn. So now, despite the fact that Eon still has or has gotten up to a higher drone count, Bjorn still has a better economy. Now we get the lair on the way. This is a late lair for Eon. It is in production. Ranges are moving out. There is a spore at the natural. There's a spore in the main. Okay, there's a spore in each mineral line. Queens have to be careful. Additional spores on the way. I mean, against three Banshee, it makes sense. Just because of the low queen counts. Oof. It's going to be another three drone kills. Now the queen no! The queen goes out as well. Brutal pickoff. I mean, Bjorn is going to be able to catch a couple more workers. Yeah, just abusing the lack of queens and the immobility of Eon. Just abusing that natural. Eon trying to go into Ling Hydra. Oh, God, oh, oh, God. Yeah, so basically, getting even more damage done. Ling's getting across the map, but Bjorn is building up. He's building back up. He's got tanks. He's got marines. Stim is done, of course. 1-1. One, one. Uh, there's a bit of a miss rally there by Pyun. Gets to calm down. Just micring his heart out with that one Banshee. And here comes the main army. Here comes the main push. Gun has been doing so much with Banshees, but now it's time for, for this. The marines and cyclones are moving out across the map. Without splash damage, it's going to be a tough hold. With its failings, Infestor, Ravagers, but the last Bion, you can just stim in. Cash out the Hydras as well. <laughs> ah, there's nothing to stop the Bio Army. He can stim, ah, and he can win. GG gets cold, and Bion will take game number one. GG. GG, well played. Bion will take the lead in the series. Again, Eon did kill a lot of workers. Remember, it was 29. 29 SEV kills. It was a good amount of damage, but if a player is opening up 3CC, it's not enough. Not enough economic damage. Bjorn could recover from that, could quite easily just mule and resaturate. Eon needed more. And again, it was just a little bit unfortunate that uh, Bjorn happened to be going into something like Cloak Banshee as well. Was able to target down those Ravagers and... 
clean up the all in. And now we're getting into game two. Game number dos. Could be leading into Oceanborn. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner of Oceanborn, we have the South Korean Terran player, the Blue Terran representing Shopify Rebellion. Leading the series 1 to 0, it is Bian. And spawning in the top left hand corner, we have as a we have the Red Zerg player from the land of Costa Rica representing Team License to Kill, it is Eon. Go. So players are settling in. And if you recall last game, Eon did open up pool first. This time, hatch first. Okay, so Eon is calming down. <laughs> Going for the hatchery on the low ground. So it should be a more standard opener so far. Now, just because the opener is standard doesn't mean we're getting a standard game. But at least in the early game, we're, we're calming things down. Yep, hatch gas pool. Love to see it. Uh, meanwhile, Bian is going for the racks on the high ground. No two racks reaper build out of Bian. Not after game one. So likewise, Bian going for a standard opener as well. Take a moment to breathe. Take a moment to ah, embrace the turtle. Let's go. <laughs> Again, I wasn't quite able to talk too much about it getting into the first series, but uh, for those that are maybe unaware, welcome everyone, welcome to the Tenacious Turtle Tussle. Uh, it's an event that we've been hosting on a weekly basis over the past, what, three weeks at this point? Um, ever since the conclusion of the EPT season, ever since the East Sullivan Cups have come on hiatus, uh, we have kind of stepped in with the Tenacious Turtle Tussle and stepping in to help kind of fill in that void of the ESL Open Cups. Uh, not just ourselves, you know, give credit where credit is due. Um, not just us, but also Wardy, uh, Kalara Setfast, and Rotterdam, uh, alongside Chicken Man and Dave Testa with the Orsasaurus Cup. You know, the entirety of the community coming together, banding together, to make sure there's plenty of tournaments and plenty of content out there for the people, for the players. Do appreciate it. Uh, also, a shout out to Stegosaurus for providing a boosted prize pool this week, as he has done for the past couple of weeks. Uh, usually, the prize pool for this tournament is 150 USD, but this week the prize pool is 300 USD. The prize pool has been doubled. That's a lot of USD, pack. A lot of USD, and top four get paid out. So it is split amongst top four players, and this series is to determine our first semi finalist. Again, once you make it into the semis, you do make it into the money. Back at home, it is going to be 3cc. So, same build here out of Beyond 3cc into Starport, into most likely Banshee production. Meanwhile, Eon across the map is pulling out of gas. Yo, standard game. He does pull out of gas, does have 16 lings on the way. True. But uh, is droning up behind this. So, for the most part, Eon opening up economically. Now, with these wave of 16 links, ideally, Eon wants to try to catch these Hellions off guard. If Beyond moves out, then Eon can slip in and deal some economic damage here at the natural. Or ideally, surround the Hellions. So, links are moving out. Hellions, they were spotted by the Overlord. Uh, were they, though? Uh, they're spotted now. Hellions are confirmed, and that means Eon can go straight for the Mineral Line. He's going for the, he's going for the workers. Going for the SEVs. Bjorn does react in time, does pull away. It's going to be two SCV kills. Nice positioning with the Hellions. And Bjorn should be able to defend. Meanwhile, the Hellions are going to get surrounded. Oh my god, the positioning! One Hellion does fall. Lings are going to be cleaned up. They get a second Hellion. They get more SCVs. It's going to be five SCV kills in total. But very impressive defense by Bjorn. He was able to pull away. He was able to hold position Michael with the SCVs earlier. This could have been so much worse. Again, a lesser player would have lost more workers. And, ooh, Eon did reinvest into an extra wave of wings. And that will eat into his worker counts. 
So Eon, not on the best economy here, but he's now getting into his own spores, getting ready for the Banshees, uh, building up a higher queen count, so we'll have some anti-air to work with. Hellions are moving out once again. Back at home, you can see this time Beyond he leaves two Hellions to defend in the mineral line. Hellions are revealed, and Eon doesn't pull the trigger. If he did, I mean, Beyond's ready for it this time. Yeah, Lings, they go in. Hellions are ready. Oh, and Eon does a force a cancel on a depot. Gets one SCV, but has to back off. So again, a much cleaner defense. At the same time, Beyond going for the mineral line, getting four drones of his own. Oh my god! Did I say four? He gets six worker kills. Yeah, six drones go down, and unfortunately, Eon's drone count was a little bit lackluster already. Like, the worker count has been low, so worker kills mean that much more. There's a big blow to the economy of Eon behind this, going into an Eva chamber, into infestation pit. Uh, Stormhost? I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to... I mean, this could be one of two things. I doubt we're rushing into a hive this early on. Uh, just because we don't even have 1-1. One, one. So, I'm... Uh, it is Eon, though. I'm leaning towards either Infester or Swarm Host. But there are no... Uh, gases are being taken now. We'll see. We'll see what he's got. Job Lord being set up. Eon getting in position. 1-1 one, one upgrades on the way. Infestation bit is done, and what's it going to be for? What's it going to be, Eon? Wings are amassing. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to Infestors. Tank of the high ground, but Eon, he wants a tank! He wants it! Up! Oh, I should be able to get it. The tank is going to fall. Nice pickle. Meanwhile, across my Banshees, will they catch a queen? They have for the mineral line. But they will be cleaned up. Ling's wreaking havoc, getting seven SCVs across the map. And we're just late flooding. We're just flooding across the map. And Lord Speed is on the way. Ah, the tank was replaced. Yeah, I'm so quick to get on top of that. The yeah, tank is in position once again. We'll force a bit of friendly fire, but for the most part, the kiting is solid, and Bion is going to completely shut this down. We'll lose 10 SCVs, though, in the process. But the Lings, they melt, and that was so many Lings being thrown out across the map. Not like this. <laughs> the Lings crumble. Bion defends. It is, in fact, going to be for a fast hive. If it's a fast hive, I'm leaning towards ultras, like an ultra rush, but... Eon does need a better economy. Eon needs a fourth base. They're going faster is now on the way. Looks so it's gonna be Ling and Fester for Eon. No Banelings. And Bion finally can move out. I'm I'm a little bit concerned here. So Bion moves out across the map. Expansion under fire. And Eon doesn't have much to work with. The Infestors are popping out just in time though. And they land a fungal. Investors, they have arrived. Queen goes down, drones as well. Fungal's coming in. Oh, does catch the army. Not bad. And a decent cleanup here from Eon. Only losing three drones. And cleans up the Marines. Not bad. Oh. But still can't expand. Uh, this is the problem. Like, Bion has a greater economy. He's on a higher worker count, plus mules. And Eon is stuck on three bases. Hive is done. Adrenal's on the way. More infestors as well. The other scary thing is that Eon spent three fungals in that last fight, and he's got one fungal left. Like, it takes a long time to regenerate energy on these infestors. There's one fungal remaining. Eon does have to make it count. Eon P spreading. Ah, he's ready for the infestors. Fungals are coming in. Decent connection. And with another fungal, yeah, we should be okay. Ah, I say, I, never mind. <laughs> Just barely not enough links. Barely not. 
Yun pushing through with reinforcements. Eon should be able to hold on. Still a very close fight. At the same time, Bjorn denies the fourth. For a fourth time. Eon just wants to expand. And honestly, that's all that Bjorn has to do. Just deny the expansion. Deny the base over and over again. And starve Eon out. Ultra Cavern's on the way, but it's, again, still a ways off. Likewise, no kite is plating. Nice spread here by Bjorn. Oh, but he's just rallying across the map, and Eon, he's running out of fungals. There's one fungal left. What am I to borrow? Ooh, decent connections. Let's shut down these infestors, though. The fungal does connect, but there's no follow-up. There's no support. Mind shots go off. Infestors survive, but nothing else. And Bjorn, he's broken the expansion. He's broken into the third. Drones are falling. Lings, oh, they're trickling in. But without a fungal, Eon cannot hold. Uh, speaking of, another fungal connects. Let's go. <laughs> Eon will clean this up. But at what cost? At the cost of 17 workers and the Woodermines reset. Oh. Oh. Okay, okay. They're whirling into the mineral lines. There's not much for them to get here at the third. But well, they drop with the natural. Oh my god, massive connections. 27 drones in total falling. And behind this, Bjorn has a fourth. It's a planetary fifth base on the way. And here it comes. The next wave. Here it comes the follow-up push. Mass Marine, Widow Mine. Bjorn has an overwhelming army. Now, there are a lot of fungal growths available, but that's why Bjorn is pre-splitting. Oof. And despite the fungus, I mean, here come the Ultras. Let's go. The Ultras have arrived. Now, these are 2-2 two -two Ultras. They have no kind of plating, but it is enough to hold. Eon, send it, Bappy. Keep going. <laughs> Eon is all in. He has no third. The third is going to fall. It's all or nothing for Eon. He's got, what, two, th three, almost four fungal growths left. Uh, the tanks are pre-sieged. The Ultras have arrived. Kind of splitting. Still not done. Oh, we're bleeding out Ultras. Yeah, the Banshee comes back home. The Sim City is brutal. Down to four Ultras. Fungal does connect. Down to three. Three Ultras left. GG gets called just before Kindness Plating. And Vian will take the series two to zero. GG. Uh, GG, well played. Congratulations to Bjorn as he does claim the series. My condolences to Eon. I appreciate that we saw the Ultras at the end. I do appreciate it. Um, unfortunately, we just weren't in the best position to get into Ultras. <laughs> weren't in the best position as there was just so much going on. Again, the big, kill, the big kill factor there was just lack of expansion. The lack of Eon's ability to establish a fourth base. Bjorn was just so active with his Banshees, with his Marines, with his drop play, with his reinforcements. Just make sure that Eon never expanded, was contained, and did peter out towards the end. GG. GG, well played. Congratulations to Bjorn, as well as take the series. And the question becomes, who will face off against him? As Bjorn has advanced on to the semi-finals, and we can switch our scenes over and have a look at the brackets. 